It's going to be crazy. That's why I say, like you say, what's, gonna, what's the future going to be? It's not going to be a conventional phone. And he's not wrong. Tesla Pi Phone Fold 2026 isn't just a phone. It's a glimpse into the new reality of tech. Imagine not paying another cent for internet for the rest of your life with free Starlink for your whole life. Being elevated by the testing aluminum on battery and the all brand new XOS operating system, this phone is designed to support your life without frustration. Uh, which will hopefully release in a few months, um, but and then it's also integrated into the X system. Um, the X phone. But can this phone actually stack up against the iPhone or Samsung? And could it be the only phone that actually makes sense for you, no matter your age or tech savviness? This video will give a concrete answer to these questions, with confirmed data and new insights. If you value this one, just tap subscribe the same way you tap your flashlight icon and help us push forward 19,575 subscribers. 1. How practical is free Starlink structured? Tesla's idea of offering free Starlink for life with the Pi phone sounds impossible at first. Americans hear the word free and immediately think, there's a catch. But here's the part that matters. Start with device subsidy mechanics. Tesla subsidizes the phone up front, let's say $200, and spreads that cost across a five-year window. That's $3.33 per month in amortization per user. Now here's where the revenue offset kicks in. Device margin on accessories, in-app transaction fees, and optional premium tiers like priority bandwidth or encrypted privacy packages. If just 20% of users spend $5 to $10 per month on those add-ons, the subsidy cost gets absorbed entirely. You're not paying for Starlink directly. You're funding it through ecosystem participation. Tesla doesn't lose money. You don't pay monthly bills. The model balances. Next is guaranteed lifetime terminal allocation. The Pi phone could ship with a hardware-locked Starlink eSIM token, containing a pre-funded service credit pool tied permanently to that device. SpaceX backs this with a carrier-grade contract guaranteeing connectivity credit redeemable only through that hardware. Think of it like Tesla bulk purchasing massive blocks of monthly access at wholesale scale, then embedding that credit directly into your phone at the manufacturing level. For users, billing complexity vanishes. For SpaceX, fraud risk disappears because the credit is hardware-bound and non-transferable. But here's the critical distinction. Free Starlink doesn't mean unlimited 4K streaming from a mountaintop. It means emergency connectivity and low-bandwidth essential services, including emergency voice and SMS over satellite, prioritized push alerts, location tracking, and low data health telemetry for telemedicine check-ins. That trimmed service model reduces capacity cost from hundreds of dollars per year down to a marginal per user expense in the $10 to $60 range annually, depending on usage caps and subsidies. SpaceX preserves critical value for users while keeping infrastructure costs sustainable. Now let's talk operational feasibility. Over the past year, Starlink expanded to 42 new countries and territories while adding 2.7 million active customers globally, now serving more than 6 million people with high-speed, low-latency internet. During that same period, SpaceX launched more than 100 Starlink missions, deploying 2,300 satellites and investing heavily in ground infrastructure, network backbone, and internal systems. Typical Starlink residential plans run $40 per month for basic service. Bundling emergency-only access or a heavily subsidized plan drops the effective per-user annual cost dramatically. Market dynamics make targeted lifetime offers not just plausible, but strategically viable if scoped to emergency and low-data needs. Doesn't it feel liberating to think of a device that keeps you linked, giving you that peace of mind you've always wanted? No carrier contracts, no roaming fees, no dead zones where your phone becomes a paperweight, just persistent global connectivity when it matters most. So, if your phone could reach a satellite constellation anywhere on Earth without a monthly bill, would you ever go back to a carrier plan? 
Take a quick action by dropping free Starlink in the comments if this changes how you see mobile connectivity in 2026. 2. How do aluminum ion batteries transform durability in everyday use? Let's start with thermal stability. Aluminum ion tech in the PiPhone Fold withstands temperatures up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit without degradation. Lithium ion taps out at 122 degrees Fahrenheit. That 18 degree buffer matters when you're living through Texas summers, where ambient heat regularly pushes past 100 degrees Fahrenheit and your phone sits on a car dashboard. Lithium batteries swell, degrade, and in worst cases, ignite under sustained heat stress. Aluminum ion eliminates that fire risk entirely. Your phone doesn't become a thermal liability in extreme conditions. Now look at the anode architecture. The battery uses aluminum foil layered with graphene composites, pushing cycle life to 5,000 charges. Compare that to the 1,200 to 1,500 cycles you get from current iPhones. That's three to four times the longevity, translating to eight to 10 years of daily use before capacity drops meaningfully. You're not replacing this device every two years because the battery can't hold a charge anymore. You're keeping it through an entire decade of use. For users in humid Florida, corrosion resistance becomes critical. Aluminum ions sealed electrolyte prevents moisture ingress, cutting failure rates by 40% to 50% in high humidity environments over 80% relative humidity based on controlled lab simulations. Lithium ion batteries exposed to prolonged humidity develop internal corrosion that accelerates capacity loss and connectivity failures. Aluminum ion construction solves that problem at the chemistry level, not with external coatings that eventually wear down. Energy density hits 500 watt hours per kilogram, running 20% to 30% higher than lithium's 300 to 400 watt hours per kilogram range. That density advantage allows slimmer designs at 0.2 inches thick perfect for foldables that actually fit in pockets without bulk. For users over 65 dealing with arthritic hands, device weight and thickness aren't cosmetic concerns. They're usability barriers. A lighter, thinner phone with equivalent or better battery life directly addresses those complaints without compromise. Integration with Tesla's recycling loop adds another dimension. The battery's aluminum is 95% recyclable, aligning with California's zero waste initiatives and potentially saving 10 to 15 pounds of electronic waste per user over a decade. You're not just buying a phone, you're participating in a closed loop manufacturing system where end of life materials feed back into new production runs. That's not greenwashing, that's operational circularity at scale. While lithium ion suffers from dendrite formation after two to three years, leading to 20% capacity loss, Aluminum ion solid state interface minimizes degradation to under 5%. That means consistent performance across long haul drives spanning 800 miles of Texas highways, where your phone stays reliable as a navigation tool, communication device, and emergency link without anxiety about sudden shutdowns. The battery doesn't degrade into unpredictability. It maintains baseline performance across years of hard use and early Pi phone prototypes show vibration tolerance up to 10 gravity forces, surviving a four-foot drop with two to three times better resilience than standard phones, backed by drop test data from similar materials used in aerospace applications. You're not babying this device with bulky cases because the screen might shatter. The internal structure absorbs impact forces that would crack conventional smartphones. 3. How can XOS be a true operating system shift? The foundation starts with a hardware-enforced emergency stack. Instead of depending on the main interface, XOS would keep a sealed, minimal runtime that can independently activate Starlink, push location data, and place emergency calls, even if the phone is frozen or the battery is critically low. This layer would run through a verified boot chain tied to a hardware root of trust, reducing failure modes that often put seniors at risk during blackouts or after car accidents. It is not showy, but it is the kind of engineering that saves lives. The second piece is phishing resistance at the operating system level. 
XOS could analyze money transfer screens and credential prompts at the system layer, not inside individual apps. If a caller ID cannot be verified or a link triggers risk signals, the system would halt the transaction and force a trusted contact approval step. That level of intervention is something app-level warnings cannot deliver, and it directly addresses the rising number of scam attempts targeting older Americans every year. Then comes simplicity. Instead of burying basic tools inside layers of apps, XOS could offer a genuine task-first interface. Four or five essential actions like call, medication reminders, emergency, and camera locked permanently on the home screen. These cannot be removed, replaced, or hidden by ads. That removes cognitive load for users in their 50s, 60s, and 70s who want a device that works every time without visual noise or confusing menus. The deeper innovation arrives with vehicle integration. Because Tesla controls both the car platform and the phone, XOS could share secure telemetry so that if a crash is detected, the phone instantly enters emergency mode, uploads a small packet via Starlink, and alerts a caregiver or family member. Apple and Google cannot offer this because car data is locked behind third-party permissions. True system-level integration is only possible when the OS and the vehicle operate under the same engineering ecosystem. Finally, XOS would have to deliver privacy clarity. Older users often worry about who can see their data. A readable, checkbox-style consent system that explains what is shared with the vehicle, what is shared with Starlink, and what is restricted. To the device would give users control without drowning them in jargon. For anyone who has dealt with a scam call, a fake urgent bank message, or the panic of trying to contact help during a medical issue, the impact of these changes is obvious. And which XOS feature matters most to you? Drop number one if you want scam blocking at the system level, number two if the emergency-only Starlink mode should be the priority, and number three if senior mode simplicity is the game changer for you. At this point, it's hard to pretend the Pi phone fold is just another rumor cycle. This is the first time in a long time that a phone doesn't sound disposable. It sounds like something designed to stay with you. And if today's breakdown gave you clarity, or just made you feel a little more excited about where tech is heading, let's give us a like for this video. And if today's breakdown gave you clarity, or just made you feel a little more excited about where tech is heading. I appreciate you being here, and I'll see you in the next one.